Well, good morning again. Good morning. As, as we enter this Advent season, that's our second Sunday of Advent. Of course, we know Advent means coming. Jesus is. He's coming. They celebrated his first birth, the birth of Christ, but now we're looking for his return. Last week, we talked about hope. We looked at a little bit of the wreath, the intertwined evergreens, no beginning, no end, everlasting life. Our hope last week was hope. Our hope is Jesus Christ. Right. That hasn't changed. He said, God said, I'm the same to yesterday, today, and forevermore. And today we light the candle, or it's called peace, the candle of peace. And, when you, you know, when you, sometimes I wish I was a great orator or a great speaker, but then I'd probably lose the meaning of everything. <laughs> and sometimes you have a meaning in here that you can't get out here. Yeah. That, that candle, that peace. You know, you look at Webster's would say freedom from civil strife or a treaty agreement to end a war, freedom from public disturbance or disorder, freedom from disagreement or quarrels, harmony or concord. But Unger's Bible Dictionary would say spiritual peace through restored relations of harmony with God. Amen. That's where we get our peace. Uh, you know, and... I, several verses here, it, it, Romans would say, uh, now the God of hope, I had this verse last week, and I said, well, I'll, cause it had, it's got both, hope and peace. You know, Paul, he, what did he say? Grace and peace, grace and peace. And like I say, grace always came first because you got to experience grace before you can experience peace. But he says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in, in hope through the power of the Holy God. He also, Paul always t so tells us in Romans, he says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is, is life and peace. You know, an unsaved person can't experience his peace. You know, uh, <laughs> we're unsaved, we have peace with the enemy. We have peace with Satan because we're on his side at that time. But now once we become a, a believer, we have peace with God. Uh, it also tells us, and Isaiah says, oh, that will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. You know, we have peace when we, when we put our concerns and we put our faith in Jesus Christ, not the cares of the world. He also tells us, and John says, uh, these things have I spoken to you that you might have peace. It's all written down. You know, I've looked back and, I've, and, I, and I look and I've heard it put this way. He said, once we become saved, as saved individuals, we have peace with God. But now, to have peace of God, we've got to be in his will. We've got to walk according to his statutes. We've got to walk according to his word. To experience that peace of God, we've got to get in his word, and we've got to abide in his word. It, and how you explain that, I can't, you've got to experience it. You know, uh, uh, to be a child of God, you've got to be a child of God to experience this. Uh, it's, my, it's my prayer that you would experience the peace of God. Thank you this morning. Good morning. I hope that uh, you've had a good week, and I appreciate you coming out this morning. Uh, you may have a testimony. I uh, I hardly ever do any commenting on Facebook, but I did last night a little bit. But uh, you'll just have to go home and find it. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, what's been on my mind the past few weeks? We get excited about football. I do a little bit. I don't do like I used to when I was younger. I still do. But why is our heart not so excited about coming to the house of God and loving Him? Give me eternal life. I'll never die again. I have to physically die once. But I just get to, as I've said before, I get to walk through a door into glory and never die again. No pain, no crying, nothing else is ever going to harm me because of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. By grace are you saved? Uh, Kenny said this morning, and that's exactly right. It's a gift of God. There's no boasting, Paul said. There was boasting, he would have been able to boast. He was a prized man that had highly individual uh, papers and talents, and it could have been a great man as, as what we look at upon earth. But he called it, counted it all loss because he got Jesus Christ in his heart. And that's all he was interested in sharing. And I hope that's what's all that's interested in your life. 
We need to go through a shaker, sifter. We need to be sifted and get some stuff out of it. And I hope this time of year that we get a refocus upon the Lord, what he did for us when he came into a little manger so that he could come and die upon an old tree to pay the sin debt of my sin and yours to a holy God so that we could have access to Christ and to God and heaven and we have an open day today. If you've got a testimony this morning, I hope and pray that you share it. I'll give you a moment to do that. You do, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Someone else. Bless you, Lord. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Bless your heart. Someone else. Amen. Bless your heart. Someone else. If not, you got your Bibles, you'd be turning to uh, Philippians uh, chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. While you're turning, I'll tell you, I looked up, uh, Strong says there's 420 times that the word peace is in the Bible. Uh, and I thought a lot about that this week. I thought that uh, there's a lots of times it's a lot about the story like Brother Robert just testified to. You can talk about peace. Others can have peace. But until you get in God's Word and know Him personally, you'll never have peace in your heart. You know the meaning of peace. You can see it in individuals as they walk upon the earth, how they love the Lord and stuff, and desire to have that in your heart. 
but you'll never have it until you make things right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's salvation, I understand that, but there's also a way that we're to walk in the book and, and follow what God says to do. Uh, he doesn't change. He doesn't say, you know, because of me, uh, uh, I'll make an exception. No. It's God's word, and it, the Bible's pretty clear about that. It's, you know, the Bible says that God be true and every man a liar. Uh, it, his word is true. So we just need to do those things. If you're not sure about what you need to do, sometimes in your walk of life, then you, we'll talk about that some today. Maybe you need to ask someone. Maybe you just need to ask him, and he'll tell you. He doesn't lead us on a false dead-end road. He's, he's got a plan for each of our lives this morning. And I pray this morning to, through the Holy Spirit today that we'll see that today. But I, you follow along with me this morning. We'll read the Scripture and go to the Lord in prayer. I want to read uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 6 through 9. Verses 6 through 9 this morning. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, the God of peace shall be with you. Let's pray. Our dear most and wonderful, gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and I just earnestly pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would just take Uh, these words this morning and use me for a little while by the Holy Spirit that they'll just speak to hearts, Lord, that will just draw us closer to you. I thank you, Lord, this morning for this time of year. I thank you, Lord, for you just talking to us throughout the year, Lord, that you would just uh, give us and help us to understand that, those things that you've done for us on Calvary's cross, paying our sin debt. We thank you this morning for that. We thank you, Lord, for the peace that we have with God. We desire, Lord, the peace of God, that it resides in our hearts and stays with us on a daily basis. Help us, Lord, and forgive us of our sins. Help us, Lord, this morning to see you in a different light and see the forgiveness that you extolled upon each of us. I pray this morning for this uh, service. I pray that if someone's here that don't know you, that you uh, speak through the hearts in the gentle uh, voice that you speak. I pray, Lord, that they'll come to know you. I pray... For ones that are not where they need to be with you, Lord. That you know each heart. You know where we've been. You know where we're going. Oh, we pray this morning, Lord, that you would just guide and direct. That everything we ever do, Lord, would just bring glory and honor to you. That they would just worship you and think of you. And, and most of all, we thank you for eternal life. And just ask all your blessings upon this today. We ask you in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to start out this morning, we'll look at verse 6, and I, I really wanted to see this when we're talking about peace. Uh, this time of year, we're talking about it, especially Advent season, I sort of try to stay up on those uh, subjects uh, for these weeks, unless the Lord leads a different way. Uh, but it says here, be careful for nothing, uh, uh, here at the beginning here, and I want us just to look at the true peace of not worrying about things that we have in our life. Now, uh, some of you ladies, I, I I don't know, there's some things every once in a while that might bother me. Uh, but I want to tell you, and I'm just being honest with you, just like uh, the Bible tells about, uh, and be honest with myself. When I worry, it's not right. As a matter of fact, it's a sin. Uh, it's a lack of faith in, in believing that God can is in control of your life and in control of a situation that you may be in. And we get that way sometimes. I know some people uh, may be more uh, prone to uh, being worriers. Uh, It might be in your disposition, your your, your inner self. You may have uh, uh, to fight that a little more than others. Uh, And I understand that. But there's a point in our life uh, that we all need to get to. And it is the fact of trusting the Lord. Uh, You know, and you say, well, I have. uh, And I've often pictured it like this. We have faith enough 
to believe that Jesus Christ died for our souls and give us a new life in heaven, and yet a lot of times I won't relinquish, and maybe you won't, relinquish control of our personal lives that we have here. Knowing that God has our souls in His hands, and when I die, He's going to carry me to heaven. Uh, the problem with it is it's a learning experience, sanctification, I understand that. It's a learning experience. We've got to learn to trust the Lord uh, more and uh, relinquish this. And, uh, we don't walk by sight, so to speak. We walk by faith. And it's hard to do sometimes. It's just always might as well just be honest with it. Uh, I like, you know, uh, uh, you can smell some stuff cooking sometimes in the kitchen. Uh, you sort of know what you're going to have to eat in a little while. Uh, that's in a way like it is with the Lord. I like to know a little ahead of time. Uh, maybe what's going on in our lives so that we have an idea of what's about to happen here. But sometimes God don't do that. Because he wants David just to trust him. Just to look at him this morning and trust him. And see where he's at and see, will you trust me? Will you just put your faith in me and trust me? And we want to look at that some of those things today. And I said a while ago that sin... Uh, the worry of sin now. Uh, uh, but here in verse 6 it says, Be careful for nothing. That means be anxious. Uh, uh, you know, uh, don't worry is what it means. It's uh, uh, the, the definition it, with it is it's troubled with care of life. Uh, it's those types of things that give us uh, uh, those situations in our lives. Uh, 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 God never gives us a command that He's not able to carry it out. Uh, do you understand that? Uh, well, I've used that a lot on myself. He didn't call me to preach because he thought that I would be able to do it on my own. Uh, but he has given me the Holy Spirit and give you the portion of the Spirit. I read this week, I can't remember, the first, or, uh, um, uh, first Corinthians maybe, that the body, where some of us are hands, some of us are feet, some of us are eyes, some of us are ears. Just like your body, you say, well, I don't need no, my hand no more. We'll try to live without it today and see how well you do this afternoon. Uh, especially if you're right-handed, let's just go home and eat left-handed. Let's just try to pick something up left-handed, try to carry something. Uh, what we say in here is we need everyone. We, it's all part of it, but he, he calls us out. He, he is able to do those things that he's called us to do, whether it's in a spiritual life but also in our physical life. He has extended that and it's to it's be able to carry this out uh, in our lives. And that's what he's talking about here. Uh, sometimes when we see here in Mark 3 uh, chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 he is talking about this. Uh, he is a picture here and uh, it's on the Sabbath day and he's there and there's a man that comes in and uh, he's got the Pharisees and the Sadducees sitting around and there's a man there that has a withdrawn hand. It's, it's just It won't stretch out. But yet he commands him, he says, you know, he goes through, he says, is it right to, to heal on the Sabbath and everything? And he eventually tells him, stretch forth thine hand. Well, if the man sitting there thinking, I, I've had this thing for 20 years, why did he stretch it out? I can't use it. What's he talking about? He is following the commands of God because God said it in his word. That's what the Lord did. He said, Stretch forth your hand. Him believing, he just stuck his hand on out. And it had become whole and come come right. A lot of times in our life, in our faith, he wants us just to put the evidence there of his word. He said, I'll go with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And he has promised that. But he says here, uh, for sometimes he asks us to do those things, not to worry about those things, to stretch forth, to go forward, and just see if I won't pour out a blessing upon you. You know, uh, uh, and God does that. He done that with His arm. He, uh, he, 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 he obeyed the word. He obeyed God's command, and that's what you and I to do. You to do. Uh, uh, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Uh, he is there. He is there. So we're able to live this life by faith in Christ. If you don't have the Spirit in you, then you're none of His. That's what the Scripture says. Uh, but if you've got the Holy Spirit living within you then you're able to do those things that God has called you to do. He has made a way, He has prepared you, He has strengthened you, He's given you everything that you need to do. But we're not to worry. We're not to worry. 
no matter what happens. It's easy said. We talked about some in Sunday school this morning, a little bit about this, those that you're in there. Words are cheap. Words are cheap. They're cheap, just as cheap, if not cheaper today. Uh, people will say whatever they want to, uh, and just to maybe to get people off their back, so to speak. But they, the, 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 the power there, or the spirit here, it gives us the power here in our lives that whatever happens in our life, that God is there. And that's saying a lot to you and I. It, it, it goes back to some of what we were talking about in Sunday school, and I, I wish all of you were in there, but I know everybody's got a class to go to, but the point of it is, is, the, is are we to that point yet? That is something that you always have to ask yourself. You as a husband or you as a wife, you as children, they're sitting here today. If you go home today and your wife has passed away or if your kids are gone, are you still going to love the Lord Jesus Christ? That's just something you have to answer yourself. So, well, it's easy to talk about that. That is exactly right. I hope by the faith that I have in the Lord, the faith that you have in the Lord, that he would strengthen you in that situation, that you, you wouldn't be let down in that situation. God help me not to falter and turn from a living God that's given me eternal life. That's the only prayer you can really say. And none of us really can answer that unless you've already went through it and you've done come through the other side of it. And God has strengthened you and seen you through those things. But there's things in our life that we don't need to worry about no matter what happens. The Spirit of God gives us the power to be faithful. Uh, he gives us the uh, power to trust Him and trust one another and to yield to the Lord's will, to allow Him to work in our life. And that's what the Holy Spirit's there for. It does that. Uh, through the Holy Spirit, we're able to trust Him even when uh, we do not know what's going to happen in our life. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow or not. Might be out in WT's tomorrow. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, I, I, I have no idea when I'm leaving. I do know I'm leaving. I'm leaving one way or the other. Through the grave or through the air. Either way, it doesn't matter to me, folks, because I've got a Savior that said He'll take care of me on either side. If I go through the grave, He said He promised to lift me up just like He lifted Jesus Christ out of the grave. If I go through the air, it's because Jesus has called us all home. I will be changed in a twinkling in a moment, and I'll have a new body and won't have to worry anymore. I'll be with the presence of the Lord. Either way, we're winners. That's what Paul talked about. He didn't mind. Uh, but we see here, this morning, we talk about Matthew 6, and tw verses 24, 25 through 34 this morning. The Scriptures are tell us not to worry about our life, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to wear, what we're going to put on. God tells us to seek after His righteousness. Our righteousness. It's God that takes care of. Uh, your husband don't bring your check home to you, ladies. You may, uh, and I, I adore you to, uh, and, and, and tell all of you, uh, you ought to love him like it was the end of the world. And it should be the, the husband's love of wife like they wasn't going to be here tomorrow. That's the point. To love one another that way. But that, uh, God is the one that gives us those things. And it's that righteousness that Christ that we need to strive for in our heart, uh, uh, to have those things in our life, that we don't worry because we can trust in the Lord. It's God that always takes care of us. Uh, it's, it's Him. We're not to be troubled, don't worry, just that God take care of us by His Word. His Word. And, and we see that this morning in these verses here. We look at this. and But also I want to see, uh, uh, go from the act of thinking, into the act of doing something. God wants us to have true peace by praying about everything. He says right here in verse 6, uh, uh, but, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Uh, and this is something that you and I 
uh, need to do. Uh, all things in our life are concerned to God. It don't matter how big or small they are. You know, I like to pray about the big things. Oh, can't handle this, Lord. Can't handle this. Now, I'll take care of this little thing over here. Uh, it's not a big problem. But that's not the way we ought to approach God. It doesn't matter if it's something small as praying before you eat uh, supper or if it's as big as, Lord, I can't make my payments and I don't have enough money. It's either way, uh, God's interested in all of it uh, because He loves us. Uh, we need to understand that this morning before we leave, that God loves you more than anything in this world uh, because He sent His only Son to die especially for you. And he thinks so much of you uh, that he has ransomed and give everything that he had so that he could have a relationship with you individually this morning. That's what a big deal it is. And all I had to do is go and say, my heavenly father, Jesus said you can call him Abba Father. Hey, daddy, I need some help. Uh, can you spare and send somebody to help me here? That's really, in a sense, I understand he's to be reverence, but you, you've got to understand why the Lord is coming to him. Uh, come to him just as easy as you possibly can. Uh, you should have a, a, a peace in your heart that you're able just to approach him in a casual way because you've had such a great a relationship that you know that he can talk to you and you can, he can provide for you on anything that you need. All you have to do is go ask. And I think that's some of our problems today. We don't ask. We don't ask. We act like we've been kicked out of the house, living on our own, and tough it out till you get to the end. And all along, the Lord has made a way and prepared and give the things that you need. And all you had to do was ask. What's popped in my mind right now, and I want to share with you real quick, is a little story that I read and, and heard a preacher maybe say years ago that there was a man and had problems with his son. And his son left home and just wouldn't talk to him. He wanted a car and his dad said, no, you'll have to wait. He gave him a Bible at the end. His daddy died and he, he gets the Bible and everything. In that Bible was the key to a brand new Ford. He never knew it. What am I saying? All he had to do was be at home where he needed to be at the Father's table and he would have received that that God had provided. That's the same with you and I. He's got everything you need. Need now, not want, need. He will take care of you. It, there is no sense in worrying, but the act of doing, going to the Lord in prayer, seeking him on the big and the small stuff, the peace of God guards our mind and it strengthens us as we go. That's one of the greatest things of being a Christian that I think is what, if you'll stay in God's Word, He'll shield you from all this mess that's going on. Uh, because the Word of God will be going through your mind and your heart and you may be trying to figure out some Scripture. You may be trying to understand what it means and what it applies to your life. But in doing that, he has made me, and his work, he's worked with me before this way, that he's kept things away, and maybe in a sense, I just it was there, I just didn't pay no attention to it. Because I had my eyes and my mind focused upon the Lord this morning. He is the center of everything that we need. Uh, he is that point here. Uh, but, but we have this here, the, that peace of God that we said that will protect us and strengthen us. And why? It's because of the cross this morning. It's because of what Jesus did there on Calvary's cross. We're able to come to the throne of God this morning. That means with thanksgiving, he says. With thanksgiving, because of the cross, we've got proof of God being faithful. We've got proof of God being faithful. He hadn't let anybody down. I think we said, someone said in Sunday school this morning, that God gets blamed for a lot of things He don't do. What we need to do is just own up to it and say, Lord, I got myself in a mess. I did this to myself. If you would, you can help me get out of this. 
but it'll be simply by your grace and mercy. I've just been hard-headed. i just been stiff-necked is what the Bible talks about. Rebellious is what the Bible talks about. You ladies and men here tonight, uh, uh, today, you like witchcraft? It's absolutely abomination, isn't it? But rebellion is the same thing. Stiff neck and stuck up against God this morning. Uh, we think we know more than He does. Uh, you're looking at it right here. Uh, guilty. Uh, we just think, well, I know better. And, and, and instead, just laying it on the line and saying, Lord, uh, you're God and I'm not. Uh, your ways are above my thinking. Uh, help me just to understand a little bit of you on this side of glory. And when we get there, we'll know you by and by. Uh, but I need to know you in a deeper relationship on this side of glory uh, so that I can uh, make it through this world and be more like your son, Jesus Christ, this morning. Oh, uh, that's what we need to desire in our hearts. Uh, but worry steals that away. But we need to be thankful. We see here in verse 7, uh, it says, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Uh, Romans 15, uh, 13 speaks of God, filling us up with all joy and peace as we trust the Lord or trust God this morning so that they may overflow with hope by the Holy Spirit. I think that's what's wrong today uh, with our churches. It's been a long time since we had a cup and it actually run over a little bit. And it actually run over and it rubbed up against you, didn't it? It spilled over and somebody else got some of it. And they might have had a little running fit a little bit. I got a little happy. Uh, the ladies got their hair messed up a little bit. Uh, their mascara run uh, about. The guys, uh, 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 false teeth started flying out their mouth. Uh, they just got a little carried away. Uh, this morning, and I, we, we need that. But that's through the God's Holy Spirit. We need to practice being in His presence uh, by prayer and thanksgiving. We need to uh, be uh, comfortable, as I said earlier. We are transformed when, uh, when we pray. Uh, he said not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the Word of God, by the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, we need to stay in the book and allow it to flow. You need to be listening to gospel music. You need to be listening to preachers on the, uh, anything you can get that will edify and build you up in the name of the Lord. Now you can know as well as I do when you turn something on and the Holy Spirit's in it. If it ain't, I got a button over there, I hit it and I change. Maybe it's just not for me. That's not, that's not for me to say. Uh, but there's some things, sometimes they're just not there. But those things that lift you up, oh, we need, to, we, need to, we need more of that in our lives. We need those type things to lift us up uh, this morning. Well, God also wants us to be, uh, have true peace by meditating on God's Word. And this is act of thinking. It goes back to the mind again. We need that uh, in our minds. Our minds have to be set on, uh, uh, we're set. Uh, at one time we were slaved to sin. Uh, we uh, had our part, Paul talked about, uh, all of us in some form or another in times past in the things of the world. Uh, but now uh, we are become new in Christ Jesus and our minds need to be upon the Lord. Uh, the Bible talks about in Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Do you want eternal life? The only way to get it is to have spiritual life. It's it. You, you, you can go and be a scientist. Uh, they try to extend life, cure, cure things, and, I, and that's all wonderful. I'm thankful for all the medical things that have went on. Uh, they may have a cure pretty soon, uh, so to speak, or a help for Alzheimer's. Oh, uh, That's wonderful. But I want to tell you something that's no different than it was when Christ raised the three uh, people uh, out of the grave, whether they were one in a tomb or whether it was laid up in a house, uh, he raised all three of them uh, from death. But I want to tell you, all three of them died again. They are not present today. 
they are physically dead and eventually got put in a tomb. But to have Christ is to have spiritual life and have eternal life, and that's what we desire today. God wants to fill our heart with what, what's good. Uh, here in verse 8, uh, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things that are excellently uh, that God has desired for us to have. Uh, there's nothing in there bad. Uh, there's nothing in there that's going to harm us. God wants us to think, to meditate on truth, purity, and excellence. Psalms 119.78 uh, says, David said he would meditate on your precepts. He wanted to think about God's Word. Uh, yes, you can. And I, I see people standing up here, and I see oh, everybody's looking at me. Yes, you can work and still think about the Lord. You can turn a reach, you can mow grass, you can wash dishes, and you can still have a mind set upon the Lord this morning. Uh, you can have those things and be transformed, as we said earlier, uh, by God's Word. We have to think about those things for us to change our hearts. It changes us. And so, well, I've been saved. I have too. Uh, nearly probably about 40 years now. Uh, but that don't mean that I always had that peace of God in my life. I got out of relationship. I've shared that with you before. You get out of relationship with the Lord. You know when you do wrong. I'm not up here picking at you and blaming you or doing anything. I'm the same way. But we need to live as close to God as we can. Allow Him to work in our lives and not hurt the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that everybody I'm talking to that's married here has a good marriage. I hope that all of you do. And if you are not married, I hope you have a good relationship with your brothers or your parents or whomever it is in your life. That same relationship. You try this, men, when you go home today. Though you clothed on the uh, thing and said, Woman, get in there and fix me something to eat for a little while. See how that goes over with you for just a few minutes. Uh, you may get a blown of sandwich, but it may be in a bread and a blown and coming separate, flying to you. Uh, uh, but the point of it is, that relationship that we have incurred here upon this side between one another, why would we want to harm it? And why would we want to harm the relationship we've got with an eternal God? It's the most precious thing that we have in our lives. And we can have that this morning. Uh, God wants us to have true peace by putting into practice that what we've learned. What we've learned through our lives. Uh, uh, act of doing again. What we should be doing. Um, you know, and what popped in my mind, especially this morning when you get in a choir and everything, I know what Kenny talks about. Sometimes when he makes an announcements and everything. The Bible says do not... In the days at the end, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It's that simple. Don't come to church because I'm your pastor. I'll just be honest with you. There's plenty of people that can preach the Word of God a lot better, I think, than I could. They're talking about being able to speak this morning. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, don't come because you're Sunday school teacher. When you get in your heart, that you come because Jesus Christ died for you on Calvary and He's allowed you to live another week to be able to come into the house of God and just thank Him. That's all He really wants. And you've made it to another week and give God the praise, and I hope before Sunday. But this morning, that's the point, is to have that great relationship with the Lord. Uh, this morning, he wants us to have that peace uh, by cause of the ways that we practice it. He wants us to trust him for everything. He, he, he doesn't want us to worry about anything. Uh, we see that in verse 6. In the latter part of verse 6, he talks to us uh, that we need to pray to him for everything or anything that we might need. Uh, we can come to him, petition him. Uh, you know, Jesus said that he had an example over on a false judge and didn't but he just done it because he didn't want to be bothered anymore. 
Uh, but we have a Heavenly Father that loves us, that doesn't mind giving us anything we ask for. Uh, when you get in a right relationship with the Lord, He's going to pour out blessings on you. Uh, you may not be materially, it may not be financially, but you'll have a peace in your heart that goes beyond anything that money or anything else can get uh, because you have a peace with God and of God in your heart. That's awesome. It's awesome. It's worth more than anything in this world uh, today. We can meditate on what's holy. We find that in uh, verse 8. We need to talk to him. But in, in closing today, I want us to look at verse 9. It says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Uh, the God of peace will be with you. Not just the peace of God, not just the peace with God, but God Himself will be with you. And that, that is what we desire this morning. That's what I desire and I pray all week that the Holy Spirit will show up Sunday morning. That the Holy Spirit will show up Sunday night. That the Holy Spirit will be here Wednesday night. Uh, but I just want, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I believe I'm just going to get a little selfish. I'd like the Holy Spirit to show up Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can have that and you can experience it. It may not be in the house because we may not be having meetings on them days. But you can be sitting there at the house or driving a car and the Holy Spirit just pour out something on you that you have forgotten that you can even experience because it's been a while. That's what we need. We need the peace with God and peace of God this morning. Do you have that peace? That goes beyond understanding. Jesus said, I give you my peace, not the world knoweth, but my peace. There's a difference, folks. I've often joked and said this, you can go buy you a new vehicle if you like. I would say you should be the happiest person that's ever been around driving a new vehicle for 30 days. Because after that, you will receive in your mailbox most of it. A payment book. The peace has probably left you. Sometimes you get in a situation and you say, ooh, I wish I hadn't looked at that. I got this meal alone, but that's not the way it is with the Lord. The Lord gives us a peace that He was supposed to bless us. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. God gives us a peace that we have with Him that just goes beyond anything. If you this morning while they come to the instrument, I'll say this. I often think, and I, when I was younger, I used to read, and you can read it over in Revelation, talking about the new heaven and the new earth. I often wonder this, and the first thing that struck out and hit me was this. God thinks the things that we think about that are so important in this world are the least things that God thinks about in heaven. And, I, and I, I often thought about this. Gold is the most precious mineral upon the face of the earth. You'll walk on it, ride a bike on it, kick rocks down it, and spit on it in heaven. Because it's pavement. It ain't nothing. The most precious thing in this world is a living soul you are today sitting here because God sent his son to die for you he loves you that much he's made a new he said I go away I go away prepare a place for you if I go away I come again he is preparing for us to be in a close relationship for all eternity and yet he wants that relationship now it's easy folks so well you don't know my situation I know, because I'm human too. We've got to get to a place in our heart and say, here I am, Lord. It's me. And just own up to it and say, here I am. I come knowing I'm a sinner. 
And by your grace, your free gift, I have eternal life. I have forgiveness of sins. And then us that are Christians, we can come back and say, Lord, forgive me for hurting you and sinning against you again. It's that simple. But it's the heart. It's not the cheap word. See, the thing about it is, God knows me. He knows when I speak, whether it's coming from here or here. I want you to think about this today. You talk to the Lord. While you stand to your feet, you just talk to the Lord. And mean it from your heart. And ask him just to forgive you if you've done anything. He's faithful and just, he said. He said he'll forgive. Anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise to me. Might not know how to pray. I didn't either. I just knew I was going to die and go to hell if I, the Lord didn't save me. And he done a miraculous work that I cannot even explain how he done it. I just felt that everything went away and the love of God flooded my heart. And I knew from that point on that I was born again and I've never regretted that. As many times as I may not have been right with the Lord, I've never regretted being saved. I knew that even if I died, uh, uh, that I'd have eternal life with Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, while they play and while they sing, just respond to what God is telling you to do.